Hey YouTube, it's JP Long. Today we're looking at a 1968 Fisher 500T. Uh, this was their early transistor line. Uh, they started uh, about 1966 uh, and ended uh, about 72 mm, when Sanyo acquired them. I think that's about that time frame. Anyway, this one's from 68. You can see it's got uh, typical hazing behind the glass, which is just filth. Uh, we're going to try to clean that up some. The reason why it is here was twofold. Number one, it has a dead channel. Number two, the power switch was really sticky and wouldn't always latch on. I took care of that. It was just a matter of taking it apart and uh, spraying some degreaser in there and then quickly relubricating so that the degreaser didn't linger so long as to hurt the plastic parts. Uh, but if we select auxiliary and turn this on, um, what we see is you can see this kind of noisy channel here and the other one that completely doesn't work at all. Noisy channels largely because of dirty selector switches. In fact, if I get it just in the right spot, that's a little better. Granted, that's with the volume on the way up too, so we're seeing some transistor noise there. But geez, as you can see, the left channel's there, but the right channel is just about non-existent. Uh, and that's true of any source that you select, whether it's phono or the radio or whatever. Uh, it's just kind of cruddy. And if I play with the infamous tape monitor switches and mode switches, it doesn't change the fact that the right channel is always out. So we can usually ignore, if one channel is out regardless of mode, like if you switch it into mono or something and the right channel, in this case, is still gone, it's not in the input selection. Uh, it's either going to be in the preamp or it's going to be in the power amp. And you can use a signal tracer and or scope. We have a scope here that we're going to use to find out where the problem is. Uh, and I'll show you some quick narrowing down tips on how to do that too. I'm going to give some of this stuff a shot today too. This uh, Neutral 401B by MG Chemicals uh, doesn't appear to have the aggressiveness that uh, Deoxid has in wiping out the carbon inside. Typically I've been using fader lube for pots, but today we're going to try this stuff and see how effective it is. So first thing I'm going to do is attack the selector switch since it's really touchy. We're just going to spray a little bit in here on the contact points and then work it a whole bunch and we're going to watch our channel. I cleaned it up pretty good. Stuff has an odor though, so that's why I have the ventilator running, which is the noise you hear in the background. Alright, so that cleans that up. We'll clean the mode switch just because. <laughs> nice shot. Uh, all right, and then we'll clean this up. And as you can see, like I predicted, this is not doing anything for our dead channel. Uh, it's just we're doing it because it will lessen the probability of things like dirty pots and things causing uh, sound issues or troubleshooting issues. So I'm just going to rotate this guy, which is our trouble control, balance control. Yeah, it needs it a little bit. Uh, do this. The pots are cleaning up pretty easy, so that's a good thing. Just get a little spritz in here. Same with the volume control. Work our base a bit. Work our volume control a bit. All right, so we can see here that although now the controls are nice and smooth operating, that still does not fix our problem with the channel out. So the next thing we do is we look at the topology. And what it looks like here is we have the signal that comes in from the input selector, which is up here. Let's point the camera so that everyone can actually see it. And then what we're doing uh, is we're going through a preamp, uh, and then we're going down to the volume control, and then we go to the main preamp and then out, uh, out to the 
loop on the back, which then goes to the power amplifier. So there's a number of quick troubleshooting things that we can do here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a jumper and we're going to go from the center tap of the volume control on one channel to the center tap of the volume control on the other channel. I'm just going to touch it here and we'll see the loading change but the channel doesn't come back. Alright, so we go after the volume control and let's see where another point here is. Here is our preamp output up here and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to jumper the preamp output. I can get in here. I'm sure I'll short something out and blow it up. It's always exciting. Let's try the easier to get to terminal first. Doing this one handed here, so bear with me. And we're going to touch over to the output. Still no channel. I'm shorting the two left and right points together. All right. So it's not looking like it's in the preamp at all. I think our problem is probably in the power amplifier. So we can have an issue uh, with an output capacitor, with a transistor, or something like that. The heatsink's not getting hot, so I don't think it's an amplifier failure, and it's not ice cold, so I don't think it's a dead amplifier. My suspicion is these output capacitors here, because they just kind of die. And this one's got some funky ooze on it, so that's, you know, that's a kind of an indicator there. So this is where the signal tracer and or scope comes in handy. So what I'm going to do is take my unused channel, which is not producing anything right now. And I'm going to come down here. And uh, one of these sides will have a voltage on it and the other one will not. Uh, so let's see here. The first guy, let's do the scary looking one here with the, the oozes. So if I put my scope here. I've got music on one side of it, and I've got music on the other side of it. A lot of loss, though. Look how much loss there is between one side and the other. Let's go back here. Look how much bigger that is. A lot of loss. So that capacitor definitely needs to go. Uh, now let's go to this other one here. And I'm going to clip on here. Look at that. Look at how big that uh, signal is there. Compared to the left channel, it's just bobbling around. Almost like it's unloaded, huh? Like there's no load on it. That's pretty huge. Let's go to the other side of the cap. Which is this guy here. I just knocked my probe off. The other side. Ah, yeah, there's nothing. Nothing there. Okay, let me uh, let me get a capacitor and we'll clip that in there real quick. And here's a uh, 2200 microfarad, 50 volt. You know, nothing special, but it's what we got. Uh, I've got a bunch of these, so let's get some test leads. And let's clip this guy in. I have a pretty high suspicion, since we pretty much just troubleshot it, that uh, this capacitor is in fact bad. We'll just replace them both. And so I'm going to clip in here, the high side. All right, there's that there. And let's go ahead and clip into the low side. First, make sure that I'm actually attached to the capacitor. See a little sparky here? No? All right, no sparky. All right, so I'm clipped in. There's our substitute capacitor. So let's go to the high side of this capacitor first. There's our signal, and I'm just resting against it, so ignore that little bit there. 
and here's the low side of the capacitor. All right, so let's hook up our scope again to our load. And we can see here that we now have both channels. Let's center the balance control. There we go. There it is. So bad confirmed that it's a defective output capacitor. So we're just going to replace the two of these. Maybe I'll just mount a terminal strip up in here or something to make it simplified. And then uh, definitely check these two guys too and the rest of these guys. And then we'll go about doing the rest of the service on it. All right, so here we are, elbow deep in crap. Let me show you why. I thought to myself, yeah, do a clean install with some terminal strips. It'll be nice and fun. All right, so I grind off the rivets, and I push the rivets through, and they immediately stop, and I go, well, crap. And so then I come up top and realize that underneath the tuner board, there is this piece of fish paper, which is keeping the rivets from being extracted. So then what I had to do was I had to pull up the tuner board, which involved desoldering all of these ground straps here, one back here, 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 undoing the tuner input, which is here, and that allowed me to extract the rivets. So now what I got to do is feed a piece of hardware down there to attach a terminal strip and then put everything back down. So if you are to replace the output capacitors in a fissure, you might want to think of a more clever way. Now, if you want to do it quickly, don't do it my way. If you want to restuff the old cans, that's also going to take a long time. So maybe find a blank spot on the chassis where you can mount them and mount them that way. But anyways, I'm going to get a terminal strip in here now, and uh, we're going to finish this up. And furthermore, if you're wondering what fun I'm about to undertake, underneath here, that lifts this up a little bit, you can see that hole. That's where my screw has to go. So I have to feed the tiny little screw, which is this guy, I have to feed it through that hole and then hold it there with something while I attach the nut and the terminal strip on the other side. Lots of fun there. So there's a screw down there resting in the hole which I got in there with hemostats, which is why I say kit hemostats. They're just great things. So there it is mounted there. Might have to extend some leads, but I can't get the board up enough on this side to attach it here and even so it would have to just stick down the other side there. So not too much of a difference. I put some Loctite on that, hopefully it won't go anywhere. Let's put the tuner board back down and then get the caps installed. Okie dokie, got the tuner board back down and all soldered up, so hopefully it didn't kill anything. All right, so we got it back together. We got our terminal strip with our output capacitors. I've checked these guys uh, and they're all still good on the ESR meter, so we're gonna leave them be. Turn this thing on. We get a happy two channels here. Center that balance control. Looks good. All right. If I go to the left here, if I go to the right there, it's weird how it does this little weird phase inversion thing. But anyways, yep. So that makes me happy. Now we can get to uh, taking that dial glass off and cleaning it because that was kind of scary looking. Remove these. I have yet to do these. And then carefully cut this away. And then pull this out. Let's do that. Alright. Quick swipe with a damp towel across the back Windex I'm on my way much better all right I think this one's done happy channels everything working and cleaned up thanks for watching more stuff to come